Hello everyone, I'm Michael from SharePoint Pro and today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a ticketing and tasking system with no code using just SharePoint and MS Power Automate. SharePoint with Power Automate is extremely powerful and I've built similar applications for large government organisations without the need to write a single line of code. The goal of this application will be to receive emails from a shared inbox, then create a ticket in a SharePoint list attaching the email file. A user will then assign the ticket to a processor who will then action the email and mark it as complete. Now why would you use SharePoint and not Outlook's uh, tasking system? Well, for one, flexibility. Using a custom solution with SharePoint and Power Automate, we can design the application to suit our business needs exactly. Secondly is reporting. Using Power BI, we can analyze the emails and count exactly how, emails, how many emails are being processed, how long on average the emails take to be processed, and which employee is handling the most tickets. And that's just to list a few. All right, so let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create a SharePoint list, which will hold our tickets. I'll call this list tickets. In this list, I'll create a choice field called status, which will, will add the choices unassigned, assigned, and completed. Additional statuses could be created to meet your business requirements. I will add a single line text field called email sender, which will record who the email was sent from. And I'll add three date fields, date received, date assigned, and date completed. These fields will be used to create reports. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our SharePoint list with our columns made. I will put the email subject in the title field. And now we'll move to Power Automate to automatically import emails into our new list. In Power Automate, we want to create an automated cloud flow and set the trigger when an email arrives in a shared inbox. After choosing the shared mailbox in the trigger step, we create the next step, which will be export email v2. In this step, we'll get the email details. We'll use the message ID from the trigger step. And then in the next step, we'll create the list item in SharePoint. To do this, we just do new step, and find create item. Here we will set the status of uh, status to unassigned, we'll set the title to email subject, we'll set the email sender to from, and we'll set the date received to re receive time. The final step is to attach the email file to the created list item. This way, the user will be able to download the eML file and they can open the original email in their Outlook. To do this, we simply create the step Add Attachment and set the ID as the ID from the created list item and set the file contents to the body of the email from the exported email step and the file name to email.eml. And that's it. Once we save this flow, all emails that go to the shared email box will be automatically uh, create a list item in the SharePoint uh, list we created, and it would atta attach the email 
uh, file to the list item so that we can view it uh, through our Outlook. Okay, the next step is to test the flow. To do that, we click test and then manually and then click test. And now we just need to send an email to the shared inbox. All right, and now we can see that everything's green and we can click into the items to see what uh, variables have been filled in. You can see in the title, the subject line has been put in, please help, computer will not boot. The status has been set to unassigned, the email sender has been set and the date received has been set. We can also go down and look at our add attachment and we can see that there's a green tick. So everything looks good. Now we'll go to SharePoint and we'll see what it looks like there. Okay, so here we are in SharePoint and I've just realized that I forgot to add the personal group column assigned to. We obviously need the assigned to column so that we can assign the task to a user. One of the great things about SharePoint is that we can add columns at any stage. I'll also create a view for the taskers. This view will filter on tasks where status is equal to unassigned. We could have equally created a view that would have filtered where unassigned was empty, uh, but I chose to use the status. So I'll go ahead and use that, do that now. Okay, so now we need to create a view for the processes who will be processing the tasks. To do that, I'll create a my task view and I'll filter that where status is equal to assigned and assigned to is equal to me. I'll show you that now. Okay, so now you can see the My Tasks view, and obviously there are no tasks in there yet. So we'll swap over to the unassigned tasks, and I'll go ahead and assign the task. Now, since it's assigned, we'll swap over to the My Task view, and we still don't see any tasks, so why not? That's because the status of the original task is still set to unassigned tasks. We don't want the user to have to set the assigned to field and also the status manually, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a MS Flow, uh, which will uh, Any time it's updated, it'll check to see if it's assigned, and if it is assigned, it'll change the status to assigned. So I'll flip over to MS Flow and show you that now. In order to make the task status update, we'll create a new automatic cloud flow, and we'll set the trigger to be when an item is created or modified in SharePoint. I'll go ahead and do that now. So first we'll configure the trigger, and then we will create a new condition step. This step will check to see if the status is unassigned and the assigned to is not null. If this is true, then we'll update the status to assigned and we'll also update the date assigned field.
you may notice that there is a red warning in flow checker. Action in this flow may result in an infinite trigger loop. This is warning us that since we are updating the item, it will trigger another flow and may cause an infinite loop. However, since we are updating the status to assigned, and we are checking that the status value is equal to unassigned, we can be confident that this will only ever cause one redundant MS flow. Now, if one extra MS flow call is too much to you, you can set a condition in the MS flow to not be called if the item is modified by the user whose connection is used to set up this flow. My next video will demonstrate this. However, in this case, one extra flow is not such a problem, so we'll just test it now. In order to test our flow, we'll simply click test and then choose manually and, choose, and click test. We'll then flick over to SharePoint and we'll update the task and assign it to myself. Now we can see that everything's green, so that's good. We can click on conditions and see that the condition was met and we can see the item was updated and it was, the status has changed to assigned and the date assigned was set to today. Now we can flick over to SharePoint and if we look at the unassigned tasks, we can see that it's disappeared off the unassigned task view. And now if we look at my task, which only show tasks which are assigned to me being the logged in person, we can see that there is one assigned task to myself. Now all I need to do is complete the task. So as the processor, I will open the task and I can view the task by clicking the uh, attachment and opening the attachment in Outlook. Now here we can see that it just says, it's an email saying, please help me. So we can imagine that I help the, the user and I'm gonna mark the item off as completed. So I simply click completed. Okay, so let's run through the tasking system from start to finish.